there grade fives, welcome to your natural science lesson for today. I hope you had a beautiful long weekend. It's the first time you're seeing me since uh, since last Friday. Um, and that you're cracking on with your first five day week. You haven't had one of those for a couple of weeks. Um, you didn't see me yesterday. Um, and that's because we are now going to be giving you science lessons just three times a week. So you can tune in and go to worksheetcloud.com to have a lesson with me on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. So it's very much the same as what you would have had at school. In school, you have science three times a week. So now you're going to have science with me three times a week. Um, so, yeah, and I hope you also took the opportunity this morning to get yourselves out and about um, in those times between six and nine that you're allowed to go out into your neighborhood and have a bit of exercise. Maybe you walk the dog or rode your bike or just took a walk around the block. Anything to escape the four walls. But remember, I hope you're wearing those masks to keep yourself and everyone else around you safe and well. So today, our natural science lesson, we are going to start a new unit of study. We're going to be looking at energy and change. And as always, I'm going to start the lesson by recapping some of the things that you should know or you should have learned in grade four. But before I do that, a quick reminder once again of our email address. It's grade five at worksheetcloud.com. And you can use that email address to send any comments or questions through to me and I'll have a little read and get back to you. Um, OK, so what are we going to be learning today? As I said, our unit of work is energy and change. And we are going to start by reminding you of the different forms of energy that exist in our world. And then we will build on that to, um, tomorrow. Sorry, not tomorrow. I've just remembered we're doing this three times a week now on Thursday, not tomorrow, not on Wednesday. So today's lesson is actually going to be a vocab lesson. I'm going to take the time now to go through with you all the different words that you need to know to express yourself when we talk about energy. And there are nine forms of energy that we're going to learn about today. Okay, so I hope you have a pen and paper ready or a notebook, or if you've been with me since the beginning of April, you should have a pretty impressive scientific dictionary now um, and pretty extensive from all the way from our work in life and living through to matter and material, which we covered in the last couple of weeks, and now into energy and change. Okay, so let's start. So the first form of energy I want to talk about is heat energy. Now, the correct scientific word for heat is thermal. So often it will be referred to as thermal energy. But at a grade five level, it's totally acceptable for you to call it heat if that helps you. But heat energy, well, what is heat energy? Anything with a temperature above absolute zero. And that is not zero degrees Celsius, where ice freezes. That is absolute zero, which is actually a minus or negative 230, sorry, 73 degrees Celsius has heat energy. That means that everything has some heat energy. The hotter something is, the more heat energy it has. Okay, and you can see here we've got a pic, I've got a picture of someone breathing fire, which is obviously a little bit silly, but um, the radiator or many of you will have some form of little gas or electric heater in your house. Um, those obviously give off a lot of heat energy. That's the point of them. We want them to keep us warm. The next form of energy is kinetic energy. Now I, I say kinetic because I'm British. I think Many South Africans say kinetic, six or one, half a dozen of the other. It means exactly the same thing. And that means anything that moves. So anything that is in a state of movement has kinetic energy. So here I've got a Formula One car um, or the football being kicked there by Wayne Rooney, had to choose an English footballer, um, shows kinetic energy. This obviously is a cheetah, the fastest land mammal um, showing excessive speeds and great kinetic energy. And then again, a London bus. Sorry, I have to reference my hometown every now and again. Now, this form of energy, nuclear energy, is probably the hardest to explain. But as you get older and you work your way through school, you'll learn a lot more about nuclear 
um, energy, nuclear atoms and fusion and etc, etc. But all you need to know for the time being is there is such a thing as nuclear energy and it is energy that is really released from nuclear reactions. So a good example of this would be the sun and the stars, those big balls of burning gas that are in our, in our universe, those are examples of heat energy being released from a nuclear reaction, so the nuclear energy there. Um, there are sad cases of nuclear bombs you may have heard of, um, such as the hydrogen bomb, or and here's some examples of those going off. Those um, use nuclear energy, or, and this is actually just a picture from The Simpsons, I don't know, if it might be my, from my day we watched The Simps, Sim, Simpsons, sorry, when I was younger, but I'm not sure if you do anymore. Um, but those use nuclear energy. In Cape Town, there is a nuclear power station, um, Kuburg, down the um, down on the coast, and they um, use nuclear um, power to create generate electricity. Sound energy, very simple, very similar to um, heat energy. You say heat energy, you know it means something warm. Sound energy means something making noise. So anything that gives off noise is giving off sound energy. So my vocal cords right now as I'm speaking are giving off sound energy. Speakers, um, if you went to a concert or you've got um, speakers on your computer um, and you're listening to me through those, that's giving off sound energy. And instruments, of course. Many of you may be very gifted uh, musicians and um, be playing guitars or pianos or anything. Those all give off sound energy. And another simple one, light energy. Anything luminous, and that word luminous means light, um, gives off light energy. So the sun, yes, we said earlier, is a great example of nuclear energy, but it also gives off an immense amount of light energy and of heat energy, obviously, as well. Um, light bulbs, candles and glow worms, or even if you've got those glow sticks, um, you know, or those bracelets. My daughter is obsessed with anything that glows in the dark. I've got those glow stars on the top of her ceiling, so when she goes to bed at night, they glow. Uh, those all give off their own light energy. Okay, so we've done sound, light, nuclear, heat and kinetic so far, so four more to go. Now this one is a little bit more tricky because the word can be confusing. Chemical energy, okay? Whereas light we obviously know means light and sound we know means something noisy. Chemical energy is energy stored, okay? Which can be released through a chemical reaction. So anything where energy is stored we say has chemical energy. So if I have a look here, I'm talking about here this um, lady is filling her car with petrol. The petrol has stored energy, so therefore it's a source of chemical energy. The food, here's a lovely roast dinner, that has got stored energy, chemical energy. The same with the hamburger. And here, the batteries. Those batteries are storing energy, so it's a chemical energy. So we should, I suppose, a not easier one was if, if we called it stored energy, but we don't, we call it chemical energy, and that's because it takes a chemical reaction to release the energy that has been stored. So do you remember last week when we were looking at reversible and irreversible changes, I told you that reversible changes are called physical reactions and irreversible changes are called chemical reactions because something has changed chemically in an item. Well, that's the same here. So here I am going to put the petrol in the car and the petrol will go through the car motor and it will be uh, chemically changed in that process. Okay, one of the most useful energies to us as humans is electrical energy. And it's so useful because it can be converted so easily into many different forms of energy. So wherever there's a current electrical current that is flowing, there's electrical energy. Okay, so the second I plug in my hairdryer, electrical energy is going to be flowing through it, and then it's going to obviously be changed and converted into heat energy um, as it comes out of the hairdryer to dry my hair. Now, this is a tricky one to explain because just like nuclear energy, 
um, it's a little bit abstract, you know, and uh, what I mean by that is we often as teachers talk about something being concrete for learners, which means you can see it, you can feel it. If I'm talking, you can hear sound. If I rub my hands together, you can feel the heat. But nuclear energy is a little hard to explain. It's a bit more abstract. And this is the same with this one. This one's called gravitational potential energy. Now, hopefully you'll all know about the force of gravity. That is the idea that something is drawn to an object larger than itself from gravity. And on our Earth, if I were to hold up this pen and I drop it, you are all going to tell me that it will fall and hit the ground. It won't float around in the air as it would in space. And that's because this planet has gravity. The pen is being attracted to the floor because it's being attracted to the larger object. Exactly the same as how the sun keeps all the planets in orbit. We are held in our orbit of the sun by gravity because the sun is much larger and has much more gravitational pull than us. And we hold the moon, the earth holds the moon in gravity to us because it's much smaller than we are and we have more gravitational pull than it. Okay, but so that's what gravity is, but what's gravitational potential energy? Well, gravitational potential energy, we also call it GPE for short, means anything above the ground has the potential for gravity to act on it, okay? So anything that can fall. So here I've got some examples. The aeroplane obviously is being propelled um, and is moving forwards, but it has the potential because it's above the ground to come down. Okay, what goes up must come down. Here I've got a skier or a rock climber or even the simple example of the pen held in the air. Anything high up above the ground has got gravitational potential energy, the potential for, it to, for gravity to act on it and it fall. And remember, if I were to drop that pen, that gravitational potential energy then moves to kinetic energy as it falls. It's moving. But we'll look at energy chains and transfers of energy a little bit more detail in our next lesson. Okay, the next one, elastic energy. Anything that is stretched has elastic energy, like rubber bands or springs or your knickers if you, <laughs> or your boxes or your whatever your underwear you have. It always has a little bit of stretch in there. It is elastic energy. So we often, last week, we were looking at materials and we said one of the properties of a certain material is that it might be elastic. Well, this obviously has elastic energy. So if I stretch something, I'm giving it energy. If I let it go, it will ping back. Okay, so now we have covered all the nine different types of energy. Let's see what you can remember. So we have learned that there are nine different types of energy. Um, can you remember all nine? See if you can pause your video right now and go through them in your head quietly to yourself, all nine forms of energy. Okay, I hope you did that because here they are. Thermal, remember, scientific word for heat, totally acceptable for you to use heat if you're more comfortable with that word. Light, sound, Elastic, gravitational potential, kinetic, electrical, chemical, remember chemical, stored energy, and nuclear. So, I was wondering if you can think of your own examples of that type of energy. So I want you to have a little look around your room or, uh, or take a little walk through the house and see if you can think of examples of each of the nine types of energy that we've covered today. You can take the time if you wish to, to hit pause, because in a second I'm gonna give you my examples and you might even have some that match. Okay, let's go through them. So my example of a heat energy would be hot water from the kettle. Um, there's a great example there. Um, I love a cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> Sound energy, I put the phone ringing um, or actually even just talking to someone through the phone. Obviously, the sound is coming through the speaker there. Gravitational potential, a book on a high shelf. I'm actually sitting and looking right at the bookshelf. You can't see it, it's behind my screen. 
but there's books on my high shelves. They all have the potential for gravity to act on them. Kinetic, the wheels of the car moving, okay? And actually, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't see that in this room, um, but I was looking at my daughter playing with her toy cars. Light, the light bulb shining, chemical, batteries. I've got batteries in a lot of the toys in this room right now. Electrical, switching the plug on to turn my computer on. That was electrical. Nuclear. I just, it's very hard to find examples of nuclear power in your own house, but I put the power station, um, obviously I mentioned earlier that's in Cape Town. And elastic, I said a bungee cord. Imagine if you would, and you were going to do a bungee jump and the bungee cord was not elastic. Oy, that would end very badly. So what are you going to do for me as your activity today following this lesson? I have put onto Worksheet Cloud um, underneath my video um, this worksheet and it's a table and on it I have a description of a form of energy and I have put three examples colon dot dot. So what I want you to first of all do is you have to read the description and decide which form of energy should be here describing it and then give me three examples that you can think of either in your house or in your mind or on the internet i don't mind that show that form of energy okay now do remember not uh one thing doesn't show just one energy type as i said earlier the sun is a great example of a nuclear energy source but it also obviously is a heat and light energy source at the same time the light bulb is a good source of electrical energy and light energy and heat energy in fact wherever you find heat and light energy there's usually heat energy following it some way shape or form but do you understand what i mean so you want an example that clearly shows something but remember other energy types will be used at the same time Okay, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you um, learn those nine words and know each about each form of energy because in our next lesson on Thursday, remember not tomorrow, I'll see you again on Thursday, we will be going over energy chains and how energy is transferred from one form into another. Okay, have a lovely day further and I will see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.